Hello. Great. Uh, welcome back. Emilio will be telling us about the release team and what you can do to help to make the stretch release possible. Uh, over to you. Thank you. Okay, so yes, my name is Emilio. I'm release manager for Stretch together with Nils, who's sitting there. Um, I'm going to be talking about uh, how can you help uh, make the, the, stretch, the, the stretch release possible? How can you make, how can you help make the, the freeze shorter than usual? And I'll tell, uh, tell you a little bit about the procedures, the, the new changes in the, in the freeze policy and, and some surprises at the end. Okay, so first of all, let's start with the, with the release team. Um, as I said, Nils and, and myself are the release managers. Um, then there's Adam, Julian, and Philippe uh, taking care of, of Stable. And Andrea, Cyril, Felipe, Ivo, Jonathan, and Mehdi are release assistants. So we work as a team. Every, everyone can take care of anything, but the Stable release managers and the release managers have the last word if, if there's any controversy or any hard decision to make. Um, if you want to join, come tell us. Uh, we're always looking for people to help with, with uh, all the work that we do, with the, with the tools that, that we use. So we'll get in touch if, if you're interested. Uh, now let's look at the timeline for, for Stretch. Um, the freeze was going to be the 5th of November, but, but we pushed it back two months. So on November the 5th, we're going to stop accepting new transitions. If you have any transitions planned, please let us know, especially if they are big, um, as the deadline is, is, in, is very, very near. Um, then on December, on December the 5th, uh, we will stop ignoring, we, we will start ignoring urgencies. So all packages will need 10 days to migrate to testing. If, if for some reason your package needs to migrate uh, sooner than that, perhaps because of a security fix, then let us know. You can write us an email or something and, and we'll, we'll push it. Um, we will also take a final look at the architectures for stretch. Um, we see if, if any problems can come up and we need to drop an architecture or something, but hopefully um, it will all be fine. And on January the 5th, the, the, there will be, we will have the soft freeze. So from that point on, no new packages will enter testing. Um, our updates can still go in, but um, if you have a new package planned, uh, you need to get it in testing before that, which means you should upload it 10 days before that and plan for any possible release critical bugs. So get it in there soon. Also, also be aware of, uh, you should be aware of uh, auto removals. So your package can be removed from testing. Be careful with that because if it gets removed, um, it won't come back in. And then on February the 5th is the hard freeze. From this point on, uh, you will need to, to request an unblock if you have any updates to your packages for back fixes or anything, as usual. And hopefully not too long after that, we will release and we can party and drink and enjoy. So winter is coming and the freeze is coming with it. And I'm gonna tell you something, I hope that this isn't the longest winter in history. Say again. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, hopefully it won't be, it won't last too long. Now let's talk about the, the, the RC bags. Okay, maybe not that kind of RC bags, but uh, release critical bags. We have uh, over a thousand bags right now uh, affecting testing according to UDD. Um, of those, 300 bags were recently filled for the GCC6 transition, and another 300 were filled for the, the helper compatibility uh, deprecations. But only about 300 are affecting key packages. This is a very nice number. Um, the other 700 are affecting packages that can be removed from testing if they don't get fixed, if the maintainer doesn't react or anything. So, so 
It'd be nice if they are fixed, but if they are not, they won't block the release. However, these 300 release critical bugs, these are the ones we, we really need to, to look at. This is the graph of the, of the release critical bugs. Um, this is the point when of the Jesse release and the freeze, I think, was um, around here, right? November, yeah. So, so it, as you can see, the number of release critical bugs was, was about the same before the freeze, except for this, <laughs> which is, which is this two, th this is the dev helper compatibility release critical bugs, and this is GCC6. But then, it, in a month from now, the, the auto removals will start removing those, and <laughs> it will go down again. So fix your package. Um, if you don't want them removed. Uh, we have a problem with unstable, so many bugs there. I think we should start auto-removing packages from there, but that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's a discussion for another day. Um, and the, the peaks in, in te this is stable, this, peaks, this peak and this peak are because um, whoever filled those really critical bugs used their own tags, but that's uh, fixed. So. Uh, now, auto-removals, okay, maybe, maybe not this kind, <laughs> or maybe we will remove your car like this if you don't fix your packs, we'll see. Yeah, so auto-removals help, uh, help a lot, as you, uh, as you can see. We don't have uh, numbers right now because uh, we just realized that we haven't been keeping the, the data in a machine possible way, uh, but us, but we will fix that for, for next year. But they help. Um, you have probably seen many, many packages being removed. And, uh, and the difference here between testing and unstable um, is because of that uh, in, in a big way. So we will keep uh, removing packages from testing, even during the freeze. Um, and, and packages that get removed won't re-enter, so be careful. Now transitions. Um, transitions are being very smooth um, thanks to some changes that we have implemented this cycle, like um, craft is ignored for testing migration. This helps transitions because um, when you rename the library, the old library doesn't need to be removed for the, for the new version to migrate, uh, which means the transition can, can move to testing very quickly and then it can be finished a bit later. Um, this also means we can, we can start another transition before the first one finishes, if they, even if they, if they collide. Um, so we are accepting transitions very quickly, usually in less than a day, um, as long as you provide the necessary information, like you tested the reverse dependencies and everything, and you come with us with that information. So there's no reason not to, not to report a transition bug and wait for wait for, uh, for the go. So please do that, especially for, with big transitions, so we can avoid uh, big collisions. And the freeze is coming for transitions in November, as you saw, so please, um, if you want to, if you have a, tra a transition to make, plan it, file a bug, whatever. Um, yeah, smooth transitions, and maybe not that smooth, but <laughs> Um, so, how to, how to make a transition? Uh, the ideal way, you upload your package to experimental to, to clear the new queue, to go through new, and then you, you get a, a transition tracker, auto-generated, you don't need to ask anybody, it's very nice. Um, there we can see if there are collisions with other ongoing transitions, or with other planned transitions, or, or anything. Uh, the second step, um, make sure, um, your package builds. If it doesn't build, you need to fix that before the transition can start. And rebuild your reverse dependencies. This is one of the, the things that people forget about or that people, um, maybe people are lazy and don't want to do it, but it's, it's the biggest, uh, the, biggest the, the most important thing. Uh, rebuild your reverse dependencies and, and check that they, if they need um, changes for, for your API changes or or patches or anything, or if they just it can be rebuilt 
after the transition starts. And then report a bug uh, for the transition. And you could upload it directly if it's a very small transition, maybe a couple of packages that you maintain and that you can take care of yourself. Um, use your own ju judgment. But if, it's have, if, if, if your library has UDEVs, then please uh, check with Debian release and Debian boot as it can affect a Debian installer release. Um, so propose updates for stable and all stable. I'm gonna quickly remind you about the procedure. Um, it's very important that, I mean, the bugs that you want to fix in stable must be fixed in unstable. Um, sometimes the bugs are fixed, but people, uh, the BTS doesn't have the, the, the right information, so we, we get confused. Um, and the stable release managers get a bit grumpy. So, so make sure the BTS has the information so, so we can just, so we don't have to ask about that. Um, and then report a bug, and you should include a justification why you have to fix, why it's important to fix this bug. Um, tell us about the bug numbers that you are fixing and, and their severities, a change, change log entry, and a source dev diff. Not a binary that diff, but the source one between stable or stable security, and and your and your your proposed update, and wait for an act before you upload this to stable. Now the first policy for threats, we have made a few changes. Um, I don't think this is updated yet, but we will we will push it very very soon. Um, the, the freeze is, go, is going to be grad, grad, gradual, as, as you saw. Um, and in the freeze, we will accept the fixes for release critical bugs. Also, for important bugs, um, always be unstable, not propose updates, and translation updates or documentation fixes. Um, there won't be a, automatic unblocks. So if you upload your package two days before the freeze, it won't get an automatic exception. You will have to request an unblock. So it will be easier if you upload it ahead of time, you know, so it migrates before the freeze. But if not, you can request an unblock. About, about auto removals, one change is that they cannot remigrate. If your package gets, gets auto removed um, during the freeze, there won't be an exception for it. This is a change from the Jesse release. So don't assume any package is safe from removal because we might remove it before the, the auto remover kicks in if it's uh, blocking some, something else or whatever. Um, don't wait till the last day to fix, to fix the, the package. Um, and block request, this is important for the, for the freeze. Um, please report a bug. Uh, don't come on IRC and say, hey, I want to fix this bug. Can I, do you think this is sensible? Instead of asking on IRC, just ask on, on, on a bug report. Um, and you should always include the justification for why this update, what bugs you are fixing, and the source the diff between testing and, and your proposed update or your update. Uh, there's no need for pre-approval. Um, we trust your judgment that you will upload um, uh, sensible stuff, right? Uh, so you can go ahead and upload to Unstable. And after that, you can wait a few days if you want, make sure it builds everywhere. Uh, there, no new release, no new bug reports are reported about recursions. And then request the unblock. The, the pre-approval uh, wastes our time because we have to look it ahead of it, then later when, when you upload. So, well, if, if you are really unsure about something, you can ask. But if, if you think it's, it's right, then you can go ahead. So architecture for threads. We have uh, the x86, the ARMS, MIPS and MIPSEL, PowerPC64 Little Endian, and S390. These were already in, in Jesse. MIPS64EL is a candidate, and uh, I think this morning, the last package that needed a rebuild was fixed. We have the DSA hardware. It's in the main, in the main archive, 
So we are going to bootstrap it in testing very soon. So it's very likely that it will be released in, in stretch. And we have concerns about, about PowerPC and FreeBSD. Um, these are concerns about the manpower, the, the number of porter, porters, basically. Um, so if you are interested in seeing any of this or you are a porter um, and want to support this and will be working on this, uh, we will have a call for porters very soon. So please reply to that and let us know so we can, we can make a decision about that. Now for stretch, um, we ex expect to ship uh, Linux 4.10. Uh, this is the reason that we delayed the, the freeze because the 4.10 release is going to be LTS. Um, otherwise, by the time, if we shipped with the, with the kernel from, from November or October, um, by the time of the release, it would be almost end of life. Um, we will also have GCC 6, 6.3. Um, Python 2.7 didn't change, of course, but 3.5. Perl um, is ex expected to be 5.24. We have 5.22 right now, but we have a transition plant. And Genome 2.22 and KDE 16.08. <coughs> Second? 3.22, that's right. <laughs> My bad. You know, people don't like Genome 3, so. <laughs> We're going back. <laughs> <laughs> now, how can you help? Um, obviously, uh, if you upload something to, to Unstable that isn't meant for, for the release during the freeze, that disrupts many things, especially if your package has reverse dependencies, if it's a library. So don't do that. Don't introduce new transitions. Uh, don't upload things that you don't mean for stretch to unstable. You can use experimental. I know experimental isn't mm, picked up by default and all of that, but the freeze should be should be short. We hope we hope that it will be short. So so if you do that, that will help. That will help us. Um, so packages don't have to go through proposed updates. Um, fix release critical bugs. Uh, the list is there, as you saw. Um, the sooner we fix them, the sooner we release. So, so we need that. Especially those affecting key packages. The, the other ones, uh, it's nice to fix them, but if, if we don't fix them, uh, packages can be removed. So and you can organize or participate in a bug squashing party. Um, also, we need people testing the upgrade uh, from Jesse to Stretched um, and the installation process, new installs. Uh, please do that if, if you can and report uh, any problems that you find or successes for the installation process as, as it's uh, usual and to the respective packages. Um, if, you, if you have something important for the release notes, your package has something some important change, change that should be mentioned. Uh, you can file a bug uh, with some explanation, um, so it can be included. And if you need something from the release team, like a bin and MDU uh, or something, don't, don't leave a note on, on, on your package bug report and hope that we see it. Come to us, file a bug report against release.debian.or so we, so we don't miss it. And then we, we can act on it. Now, how to contact us? Is if, you need, if you need any things, um, report, uh, report back release.debian.org for anything that we handle through, through the back tracker. This is important so, so we don't miss it. If you send an email, we are going to be flooded by, by, by emails during the freeze with, um, with unblocked requests and so many things. If you send an email, it's very easy for it to be missed. Uh, so file a bug report. Um, for other things, you can, you can contact us on the, on the mailing list. Um, send, an, send us an email and we'll help you. Again, please bug report. People, 
people forget about this. People come on IRC and ask, uh, can I have this transition? Can you, can you bin and view this package? Uh, it's, it's better if you file a bug report. You can also come on IRC, come on, on IRC for, for other things. Or if you need a live discussion about something, and report back, please. And finally, uh, so you know, stretch plus one is going to be Buster, and Buster plus one will be Bullseye. <laughs> and I want to thank Debian and Collabora for bringing me here. And if you have any questions, please go ahead about Debian or Game of Thrones or whatever. How did MIPS end up as a release architecture, the Big Endian port being the only 32-bit uh, Big Endian port now? What's the question again? How did it end as a release architecture? Yes. Well, there's a lot of hardware. There, there were people porting it and so on. So, so it became one. And as long as it keeps being supported upstream and we have porters and there's hardware, there's no reason to drop it. Of course, if, if, if upstream support falls, mm, falls apart, um, I think there were problems with, um, with uh, libc in, or the kernel, I'm not sure. If, if problems come up, uh, we might drop it at some point. And that's possibly, that will happen in the future at some point. But it's not happening for stretch. We will see how it goes in the future. Right, a question from IRC. Um, could you elaborate a bit on the reasons for um, disallowing re-entry of auto-remove packages? Um, in particular, if the auto-remove package is a build dependency of something else that would otherwise have qualified for the release. Right. Or, or read it yourself. <laughs> yeah, so, so if it's a build dependency, Mm, that's that's basically the same thing. Um, all packages in the chain will are notified by the, I believe, by the auto removal tool. If not, let us know and, and we will fix that. But um, if 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 one of your dependencies uh, have a bad report and and it doesn't get fixed, uh, and your package gets removed, um, I mean. There's nothing preventing preventing the maintainer of this package to, to fix the other one. So, or, or to ping people, or, or, or if this happens and you cannot fix it and whatever, you can come and let us know and we might uh, give an exception in this specific case. But, um, but in, in principle, uh, if it gets removed, then it's removed. So, Hello, apparently uh, we have users for PowerPC, 32 bits, big Indian, and uh, people are still using this. But uh, maybe this is more a question for PowerPC porters, if they would be willing to switch to 64-bit big Indian uh, user land. Right. And yeah. yeah, that's something I want to, look, to take a look at, um, whether uh, the PowerPC 32-bit, I mean, the PowerPC hardware can run on PPC64 or not. And make sure, check whether we have porters, check with the PPC64 porters, um, and then we will need to make a decision. Uh, but um, it's clear we have users of PowerPC, so, so we need to support, we, sh we would like to support them one way or another, or another whether through PowerPC 32-bits or through PPC64.
BSA recently received an offer for Spark 64 hardware directly from the hardware vendor. When do you expect at the latest point to include a new architecture in, into your um, release time frame? Into stress? Yes. Yeah, that should happen uh, as, as soon, soon as I mean, as yeah, as possible, I, I mean, I mean, we haven't, we haven't heard anything about the Spark 64 porters. I think there was an email on the, on the qualification thread, but um, we didn't get any direct uh, email telling us that they want to, to include it. Um, okay, we can talk later, but uh, if, if, if you want an architecture in stretch, uh, the things that need to happen are that the hardware needs to be maintained by DSA, which you said you have an offer. The port needs to be in the main archive, and then uh, we can we can think if we can see if it can be added to testing. So, am I missing something? In in practice, it's the fourth of July, August. September, October, November, 12 weeks, you, it's probably pushing your luck for stretch, even if we had hardware tomorrow. 12, 12 16, whatever. Yeah, I saw that the, the, the number of packages was very high, like 11,000 out of the 12,000 that... 10,800, there's so we're currently at uh, 10,800 uh, binary Arch packages on Spark 64. Um, uh, one guy recently, uh, James Clark, I don't know if he's here. Uh, he's just a Debian maintainer, but he actually fixed a huge load of packages. Um, as for upstream, Oracle's actually paying lots of uh, developers now to, to support Linux on Spark. They have their own distribution, but they are also like doing lots of upstream work. And at some point, Oracle uh, said that they would be willing to donate hardware to Debian. And that would be at least one, uh, hopefully two Spark M7 servers, which run at like 40,000 grand, uh, 40 grand uh, one server. That was at uh, th 32 core machines. Right. So that's more or less the fastest you can get with Spark. Yes, so send us an email, maybe include the DSA team and the FTP masters. Yeah, DSA is, is in the loop. So this yeah, is just, just a matter of like Oracle, like, you know, yeah, it's, moving. They're like, they're a huge company and they, they take forever to like. Yeah, but, but let us know so, so we can know about this plan and, and see if it's possible for stretch if things move on and, and tell, us the, tell you the requirements that we have. Uh, but if it, if it happens and everything looks fine, then I think we'll be happy to include it. And I just finished setting up the Spark 64 Porter box if someone wants to try. Okay. It's called well, notker.debian.dev. Okay, any more questions? Not so much a question, but a comment. We're already planning for some BSPs in the UK. Um, we're going to have to find more stuff to do because you've done the auto removals. That's, <laughs> that's our normal job. Well, there's still 300 release critical bars, so hopefully uh, you have some stuff to do. But they take a lot longer to actually fix. Yeah. <laughs> you cannot just remove those. So obviously, um, it's great if other people want to do BSPs too. Um, we're we're going to work. Well, Jonathan and I are arguing over who gets to host in the UK. We might do both at this. Point. <laughs> you can do two. There will be one. There will be one in Germany, and I think in end of September, beginning of October. Um, and I have an additional question, which more or less goes directly to Steve. Do we have an expectation on when the release candidates for the Debian installers will fit into those time frames? <laughs> to be honest, that's up to Kibi. Um, we just released um, DI Alpha 7. In fact, he announced it. Was it last night, early this morning? Yeah. Um, I think we're probably ready to start calling them beaters any time. Um, Unless anyone has major things they want to put into DI, um, 
you know, we're calling them alpha so far because we haven't started getting close to a release. Um, yeah, we're ready to go, I think. Um, speaking about betas in for DI, how's it progressing on the artwork front? You can't replay that. So um, we sent out a proposal or a request for it, and uh, I haven't heard back from anybody yet, unfortunately. I think somebody created a video page for a single yeah. artwork, but nobody actually showed up on the and said, I'm doing artwork. So uh, we're still looking for people to do that and announce it. Steve? You want to so there's one person who's created some artwork and it's on a wiki page and they haven't really talked to anyone though. <laughs> Anything else? Okay, thank you very much and see you fixing bugs in the freeze.